Consider yourself in contempt. Colonel Jessup, did you order the code red? You don't have to answer that question. I'll answer the question. You want answers? I think I'm entitled to You them. want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Son, we live in a world that has walls, and those walls have to be guarded by men with guns. Son, we live in a world that has walls, and those walls have to be guarded by men with guns. Son, we live in a world that has walls, and those walls have to be guarded by men with guns. Who's gonna do it? You? You, Lieutenant Weinberg? There are so many scriptures that we could bring forth from the Word of God that says the earth does not move. And as you say also, this was the understanding of all of the, the ancient cultures that the earth was flat and immovable and the center of the universe. And it's very difficult to take scripture and yeah, I mean, you can't do it. The Bible is very explicit that the earth is not moving. So there comes a point when it really is difficult to try to overthrow the word of God with NASA. And Jake, I got a question for you. Why does everyone mispronounce Pythagoras's name? I can't <laughs> understand that. Why do they do that? Well, it sounds like a dinosaur breed, so I, I wouldn't <laughs> mispronounce it too. <laughs> but whether Pythagoras or Pythagoras, it was Pythagoras who the Freemasons and the Druids and the Rosicrucians, they all claim him as their father. It was Pythagoras that invented the heliocentric concept of the universe. So what are you going to do? But a question for you, Zen. Uh, the Word of God says that the sun, the moon, and the stars are under the dome, not outside of the dome. How high do you believe uh, is the very top of the dome? And it, to understand that there is that, like Isaiah 40, 22, that the Lord sits on top of the circle of the earth, that he is right up there, uh, not millions and millions of miles away but he is right up there looking down upon us this is absolutely mind-blowing that his focus of attention is not in the endless galaxies of an ever-expanding universe but he is concerned with us in this little enclosed system but in your understanding how high do you believe this dome is well i'm not exactly positive of that but i do believe that there is a way to find out because we know that radio uh, waves and maybe other things like lasers i'm not positive but they in my opinion one can test and determine how high the vaulted dome is because it reflects back radio waves and so the way to determine how high the center of the vaulted dome is is to allow to have somebody be able to go to the north pole telling us because they're covering up what is up there um, and there's a lot of physical structures like the magnetic mountain and also this vortex which leads down into the hollow earth that all of that is being um, hidden from us much like whatever is beyond the outer limits of the antarctic ice wall uh, if anything is out there we don't know uh, certainly there's that map that the uh, the buddhist map which was discovered in a monastery a thousand years back and which recently came to light that shows uh, other land areas out that way but whatever it is they're not allowing us to get to either place to introspect to explore to examine and to look at uh, what might possibly be there but if somebody were able to make it to get to uh, the north pole and be allowed to 
set up an experiment where they could send radio waves up to where Polaris is and test the, you know, the reverb of that to see how high it is. I'm sure that that would be something that most certainly could show us and determine what that exactly is because the firmament is a solid structure. Um, there's a, a passage in the Legends of the Jews which talks about it being three fingers thick and an impenetrable, impenetrable solid structure. That's something that I'll go into when we talk about um, Enoch chapter 18 and also Job tap, uh, chapter 26 where he describes this opening down into Sheol, this hollow earth opening that leads into the the bottomless, into the abyss, and that all of this is located in that region. But uh, I do believe that there's other ways to test too. If you can't make it to the North Pole, that we know that the center of the vaulted dome would be where the equatorial regions are, and that one could test certainly uh, from there, wherever the equator, whatever countries and cities are directly on the equator to test the heights and to get um, use radio waves or lasers, whatever would reverberate off of the, the vaulted dome and to be able to sense and test that uh, it would take, you know, some kind of scientist that knows better than I do with regard to how to do that. Uh, but I do believe because it is a solid structure that that kind of experimentation can be done and that kind of detection can be affirmed and that we can get conclusive evidence as to how high it is and somebody might even be able to go from every 10th latitude you know going uh, starting at the equator going 10 degrees northward and seeing the scale and how high the vaulted dome is at every area as it comes down uh, and that if somebody were able to go out towards the extreme southern latitudes and to do the same kind of testing we could determine whether the firmament is in fact coming down near the Antarctic ice wall or if it goes on beyond uh, and that there are other lands beyond where they are protecting and not allowing anybody to go. But, um, you know, again, it would take somebody that had better know-how. But I do believe that because the structure of the firmament is solid, that it can be tested and, and that it could be detected in such manner. That he was talking about perhaps the possibility of an expedition there. And I don't know, and I would be inclined to believe that uh, not even our military or any of the militaries of the world can go beyond that Arctic ice wall. And I think they have attempted that before, have they not, Zen? And is this your understanding that uh, they're not even to go there, able to go there? Yeah, no, no sovereign nation is allowed. With the Antarctic Treaty, they are not allowed to go beyond a certain point. There's to be no drilling, no corporate, um, you know, profiteering, nothing. And that it is um, monitored by like a United Nations force. Uh, and so, yeah, they, it prevents everybody from getting into observing or exploring beyond a certain point. But do the military, do they have the capability? Can they fly over that, the Antarctic ice wall and see what's there? No, not in my opinion, um, and I don't believe anybody has. Uh, and if somebody, you know, if there's somebody out there that has knowledge otherwise, but I've never heard of anybody sp uh, speaking about it or talking about it or anybody that has uh, gone on beyond it and that has shared testimony as to having done so. Um, all I know is that there has been some testimony that has come forth of people wanting to, even certain militaries um, from other nations, uh, going close to that region and then kind of being shuttled, just like, um, you know, if uh, the 
uh, Russian bombers were to come close to here and then the, an American escort would come out and, you know, kind of fly with them, making sure that they don't uh, breach into our territory, that the same kind of thing happens there, that it is monitored, that there is money, funds, uh, and a huge force, a military force that is dedicated to keeping people from such exploration. And so in my mind, it's just not possible whether there is some other, maybe, you know, some kind of covert um, elitist world, United Nations uh, group that has, and maybe they are even exploring past that now. We don't, we don't know, but that kind of stuff doesn't get back to you know us as the masses. And on uh, back to this letter here, something else I want to ask you. And as you said, the um, the northern regions, and what I what I have come to believe. And by the way, for those that are interested, uh, Friday night on FOJC, I did a teaching called Flat Earth and Arctica and the Garden of Eden. And if you want to listen to that, you can go to uh, FOJCRadio.com and go to our YouTube channel link and watch that if you'd like. And my is that not only the area around Jerusalem, but also the northern and southern polar Arctic regions and the Antarctic ice wall around the earth, that this was all at one time paradise. And this is borne out uh, in the in the extra biblical text. And this mountain in the north, uh, different cultures are referred to it as uh, Asgard, Shambhala, Hyperborea, Atlantis, Thule, and on and on and on. But all cultures of antiquity were aware of the significance of this. And it says here in this letter from Mercator, it says, under the pole, there lies a bare rock in the midst of the sea. And he speaks of it as, and, and there's this rock. And of course it would have to be 33 miles long. <laughs> right. That causes the magnetism uh, at the pole, but he speaks of it as being underneath the ocean. In uh, in times past, before in the pre-Adamite world, before the world became without form and void, was this one time this mountain above uh, the earth, or is, has it always been under the sea? Uh, was it at one time? Uh, is it like a dimensional thing? And it speaks of the stones of fire as almost it might be a some kind of a dimensional blinding. What do you think is going on with this mountain in the north? I, I do believe that and because we're not able to go there and to see it from ourselves, but I believe it, it does have both physical and interdimensionality. And the reason I say that is because when you study the work of the 14th century explorers that describe having successfully gone there and also um, successfully come back to share as witness to what they had discovered there, they talk about this Rupes Negra, this um, black rock, which is said to be this magnetic lodestone mountain. And in my opinion, this particular mass which it does rise out of the sea um, is said to be the highest mountain in the world, which you would think that, you know, if, if that is so, that anybody that flies close to that region, or I don't know how far out the, you know, the band is, I know they don't let you go directly over the pole, but if it's as high as they say it is, we would think that somebody would be able to spot it or see it, um, even if they, but again, you know, we don't know how far the, the perimeter that is protected it is. But it is said to be the highest mountain in the world. And the different mythologies describe it as being the home of the demigods. Uh, and it is also my opinion that this mountain lying at the very center of the plane of the earth at the very north pole, that this is where the Mount of the Congregation is, and that this is also the mountain that Christ was taken to in temptation, where Satan takes him to this exceedingly high mountain and shows him all the kingdoms of the world and just asks him 
you know, tells him he would give him all these kingdoms if he would just bow down and show him a little worship. And it would make sense that it would be from this area that all the kingdoms of the world could be cited uh, being at the center of the earthen plane. And that this is also because it is strategically located, strategic place, that this is also where the Most High God has established the heavenly temple. Uh, and that it is from there which he looks down and watches over all of the occurrences here upon the circle of the earth. But um, the other thing with regard to what we're talking about in the uh, is the description of this whirlpool surrounding this particular lodestone mountain and that there is an opening a, a said to be a huge opening at the north which leads down into the depths of Sheol and that there near that area that hell is naked and uh, observable and that it is there also that there is a vortex which leads down into the interior of the earth and in my opinion in studying and putting all of these things together that this is also the place that Jacob saw the angel and descending also going down into the nether regions and that all of this comes together um, there's a passage I'll read this really quick it says thus one earth rises above the other and when it's talking about the earth different earths it's talking about the levels of the earth because it describes that there are seven heavens leading from the plane of the earth to the the top of the vaulted dome and that there are seven degrees and levels of Sheol as well. And so it describes it as this. Thus one earth rises above the other from the first to the seventh. And over the seventh earth the heavens are vaulted from the first to the seventh and the last of them attached to the arm of God. The seven heavens form a unity, the seven kinds of earth form a unity, and the heavens and the earth together also form a unity. And so in this new book, I'm describing and sharing how the earth is the meeting place for heaven and hell. It is the plane where the interdimensional and the spiritual worlds above and that of the demonic realms below come together in union. And this is where everything overlaps, which is why we have here in this world and on this dimension the experience of good and evil and the duality of pain and pleasure and the spiritual and the carnal world all coming together in one place in one time.